So Sabrina is going to walk us through tonight uh, the things that we really need to know. So this is great information. So welcome, Sabrina. Well, thank you, Professor Greta Kishbaugh. <laughs> I love saying that, Professor. Uh, you know, I, I want to thank Greta because she certainly qualifies what most people don't know, and I didn't know until I got involved in being a financial coach, is that most of us do not have our estates covered. We, we don't have that extra layer of protection that we need to cover the very basic things in our lives, should there be loss of life or should there be a critical or chronic illness? Now, critical illness certainly means it's a living condition. So how do we prepare for possibilities? How do we prepare ourselves for those things that could happen that could change our entire lives? It would change where we live, how we live, and who we live with. So we're going to use Greta as our student person here. So <laughs> Greta is going to come to me because she is really concerned. We've got the pandemic going on. She's seen some people that have lost their life. They didn't have adequate protection. Their families were suffering. Maybe they did a GoFundMe account because they didn't even have the basic thing called life insurance. They didn't have that. Mm -hmm. And now she, like she mentioned, she's got children and she's very concerned. Like Sabrina, I'm, I'm really concerned about my family, you know, how do I protect my family? So um, Greta, I'm going to show you a little formulation that I use to show people how they can protect themselves. Have you ever heard of the dime theory, Greta? I had not until I met you. <laughs> okay. You know, it's a scientific formulation of how you can provide that extra layer of protection for yourself and your family. So we're going to go through this. And if my if anybody's out there listening, I'd like them to write some letters on their paper. Greta, write this on your paper as well. Okay. Okay. So I want you to write the letter D and underneath it, write the letter I. Underneath okay. that, the letter E. Uh, M, I'm sorry, let's spell okay. it right, M, and underneath that, the letter E. So you're, you're essentially spelling the word dime, but we're going to use those acronyms to teach you or educate you. Remember, I'm a coach, so I'm going to educate you on how to fill in the, the dots here. Excellent. I am partnering with a company called Capital Choice. Capital Choice is a financial marketing group that was founded in 1996 with the goal of helping Main Street learn the financial principles that have benefited Wall Street. We educate the middle class in three important areas in financial principles. We teach you, number one, how to protect your working income from death, disability, critical, and chronic illness. Now, Greta, most people pretty much have figured out that life insurance oops, can be used for death. But did you know that it could also be used for disability, critical, and chronic illness? Did you I know that, no idea. No. no, I did not. Mm -mm. Okay. So remember, you were asking me for that extra layer of protection, the what ifs I get sick and what if I can't take care of my family. Well, now here we've got that in number one. Number two, we also help you reduce and eventually eliminate debt and save for emergencies. Greta, you being a professor, I'm sure you probably saw a lot of people go through this pandemic. They were not financially prepared for 30 days, no. right? Let alone no. six months. Did you see that? Yep. Greta? That's okay. correct. Yep. Yes. Yeah, so now people need to tighten up on that, learn how to eliminate debt and save for those critical things such as a pandemic. And number three, how to make your dollar work harder for you and provide income for retirement. Now, Greta, Greta you're a professor. Um, you you know, talk to a lot of people in business. Do you see a need for income retirement? Because are pensions still working for a lot of people? I mean, do, are corporations? I mean, I have a pension. pension. I have a pension with the state of Florida through the education because I'm an educator. But it's it's not going to be enough. There's no way it's, it's going to be able to to yeah. Okay. Thank it's not going to be enough. And and most, uh, you know, the private sector, they no longer offer pensions. But you're right. The state of Florida, a lot of those places still do. But it's not enough when you think about how much money you need to come into your income every month when you're in your retirement years. So that is a critical piece. As a financial coach, I help you work on that. But today, Greta, to solve the immediate problem of providing protection for your family, we're going to answer the first question. How to protect your income by reviewing our presentation on the dime theory. So right now you got a piece of paper. We're going to help you navigate. 
So the first thing I want to say, Greta, is you're an educator and you understand the value of education. If I've helped you today, Greta, would you feel compelled to share this information with other people? Absolutely. Yes, an educator always wants to make sure people are enlightened. And also, some people love teaching, just like you love teaching. And I love empowering people, right? So if there are any of you out there that love doing what you see me do, in about 15 minutes worth of time, reach out to me and I can show you how you can become a financial coach. Now, Greta, let's talk about that D on your paper. Mm. You wrote the letter D down. Mm, D stands for debt. (laughs) So, Greta, I want you to think right now about life insurance. Let's just say right now, just because we're practicing, let's just say Greta has a $10,000 policy at work. Because, you know, at work, everybody has life insurance on their job. They're offered life insurance for, you know, pennies on the dollar. So, Greta, as an educator through her school, her college, They've graciously given her a $10,000 life insurance policy. Well, we want to see if that's enough. So, Greta, would you prefer your current life insurance that you have right now to pay off your outstanding debts, such as credit cards, student loans, car loans, etc.? Or would you want to leave that burden to your spouse to pay off or for your children? You know, the creditors yeah. to come after your, your husband or kids. Yeah. yeah, that would be unfair. <laughs> oh, yeah. But, you know, we're in a community state here in Florida. So, of course, and I'm sure a lot of other states, that debt will be attached to your estate, uh, your home or whatever. They'll come after your spouse. So if you don't want that to happen, let's try to figure out a means to cover that debt. So, Greta, how much debt are you in? This is a theoretical. So this is practice. It's I would not say real. I would say f- well, about 15000 We can put 15000 would be credit okay. cards. and Okay. And that's very realistic, by the way. Most people are in about, because remember, that includes your car loan, too. So she's in about $15,000 worth of debt. I want you, if you're listening, to write your debt down. How much debt are you in right now? And um, what's going to happen to that debt if you can't pay it, living or deceased? So, Greta, we're going to move on. Okay. So we're going to talk about income right now. Would you prefer your $10,000 policy that you have right now, Greta, to pay your family 100% of your monthly income for the next 10 years to continue paying living expenses? Or would you prefer that they live on a reduced income? So, Greta, give me 10 years worth of income. And if you would tell us how you arrived at that 10 years so our our listeners can kind of get that math. Okay, I'm taking $30,000 a year and multiplying that by 10, so 300000 300000 okay. So that's, Greta needs $300,000 of her income only. We're not even talking about her husband. She needs $300,000 of her income to cover her household should she become critically ill and can no longer work and earn an income. And remember, she's still got kids at home. So we know she wants to be around for the next 10 years so she can finish raising those boys. Right, Greta? About 30 years, I hope. <laughs> you want to keep them at home, girl. You better let those boys I wanna, go. Yeah, I know. I don't but know. Anyway, well, hopefully, if I make the right choice, they will. They can go out on they'll their be own. Around. That's all part and of the all thing of this. Is, yeah. The thing is, you want to plan so that they have a life with or without you. That's what right. we want. If you're not around, you still want your children to have a life and and have a decent life and not, you know, be shuffled off from this relative to that relative. So you want to make sure they're taken care of. So figure your income. Greta just told you about $300,000. So let's move on to our mortgage. So now think about it. Greta has a home and, you know, her and her husband and the kids are comfortable in that home. Would you like your, your life insurance that you have right now, which you've already said is $10,000, to pay off your existing mortgage balance or purchase a new home so that your family has the option to live in the same or better community? Or would you prefer your family to continue paying the mortgage or rent on a reduced income? Now, the reduced income is because... Number one, Greta's gotten so sick she can't work, so she's not drawing an income. Or maybe there's loss of life. Maybe she's lost her life, her hubby's lost his life. We only have one income now. Can we still pay the mortgage or rent? So, Greta, how much is your mortgage? Um, It's about $100,000 we owe on the house. Okay, $100,000. Okay, so we've got to put that down. Now, for those of you that rent, 
let's just kind of make it easy for you. Let's say your rent is a thousand dollars a month because we know rents around a thousand, if not more. That's twelve thousand dollars a year that you're paying to keep a roof over your head. Twelve thousand dollars a year. I bet you hadn't really calculated that. Now let's keep that roof over your head for ten years. That is now a hundred and twenty thousand dollars. So if you're at home you should be putting a minimum of $100,000 down for mortgage or rent and um, because that's a really big number. But there again, Greta, this is to keep a roof not only over your head, but for who? Your children, right? Right, right, that's right. That's 10, 10 years worth of uh, doing that. So now we move on to education. Boy, I tell you, this is where you're going to meet your maker here, Greta. So <laughs> <laughs> would you prefer your life insurance proceeds to establish a fund for each of your children under the age of 21 to attend college or start a business? Or would you want your children to attempt to borrow the money to accomplish those important goals? So Greta, this screen here, um, these numbers represent 2015, 2014, okay. 2015 okay. numbers. But back then, the cost of an average college degree was $75,772. And Greta, you're you're you have your MBA, so I got you know two. you know, know. money. Yeah, you, you know you know the cost of college, right? You have I do, your MBA, I do. so it, it's not yep. free. And now you have two boys. So how much money would your family need to pay for each of your children? Now maybe you're not going to do college because remember, let's make okay. bring some reality to this. Okay, it's at college or start a business. So Greta Greta teaches uh, entrepreneurship. So I think we had talked about your boys starting a business instead of going to college. So how yeah, or even like we that? said about a house, maybe even put a payment on a house or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah you something. help them with a down payment. I think we, so did what we say 10000 $10,000? $10, $10, $10, $10, $10, okay, yeah. so Greta's going to put $10,000 down there. Because I tell parents, if you haven't talked about this, you need to talk about it. Even if college is not an option, you still are going to help your kids do something. They're, they're your financial investment. So... This is all about planning. So for the letter E, put some, whatever you're going to put down to help your children. So now that okay. brings us to the end of this whole theory called the dime theory. Greta, will you add up your four numbers? That's your debt, income, mortgage, and education. And then tell us how much life insurance you need. Okay, I'm almost there. My mortgage, $425,000. Oh my goodness. Now how much we said you had a ten thousand dollar policy at work, right? Oh God, yeah, that's it. And and who knows, you know. So what, are you insured or underinsured, Greg? Uh underinsured. <laughs> wow. Did everybody hear that? So I want you to think about your policies at work. Are they adequate to keep a roof over your head and food on the table? for the next 10 years and no, to raise your, no, raise your children if you have them. And listen, right. this goes for couples too. If you don't have kids, you still got to keep a roof over your head That's and right. you still have to have income so you can eat every day. Wow, $425,000. So Greta just learned she is grossly underinsured. So what does she do about that? Well, now she's got to go see if she can find out how to price life insurance. And this is where most people don't know anything. I didn't have a clue. My life insurance had always been covered at work, never had to worry about it. Once I detached from my employer protection, I had to go shopping for life insurance and didn't know what I was looking at. So Greta, life insurance is priced by the thousand, just like gasoline is priced by the gallon. Everybody knows how to buy a gallon, uh, you know, fill their tank up because they know how it's priced. Well, let's look at, there are several vehicles to provide a layer of protection for your family. There's term life insurance and that's, $2.25. Can you see that, Greta? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's universal life, $16.29. Variable universal life, $18.21. Whole life, $20.69. And CCFG term, $2.09. So, Greta, all of these policies, if you will, all of these vehicles pay the same amount when you die, they pay a thousand dollars. So if they all pay a thousand dollars, nothing else but just a thousand dollars, would you want to pay least, which would be two dollars and nine cents, or would you want to pay the most, twenty dollars sixty nine cents? Uh, the, the least. The least amount. <laughs> of course. Hey, we 
bargain shop, don't we? Especially women. We don't want to pay a penny more than something. That's so right. That, so, yeah. So, you would want to pay the least amount to get equal coverage because all of them pay the same. So, then that begs the question. And, and these are real numbers, by the way. Uh, LEMRA, which is an organization they reported out in 2014, that these were the average cost of these types of policies. So, we just didn't pull these numbers out of the air. So, now... Why is whole life 20 times more than term if they all if they both pay out the same? That could be confusing for you if you don't know how to buy life insurance. So what is the difference, you may ask, Greta? Term yeah. life insurance, term is what's called pure death benefit, no cash surrender value. And Greta, when I took my state exam, because I have a license in financial services, I'm licensed, this was one of my questions. What is term? Is term life insurance pure death benefit? Yes, it is. They wanted to make sure that we knew it was the purest death benefit out there. And it mentions the term, no cash surrender value. We're going to come back to that. So Greta, the difference in the cost of term versus whole life is how the life insurance company creates your cash value. Had you heard the term cash value before, Greta? Not, not I don't know what it means, no. Not okay. It's life insurance. It's like a savings account. And okay. a lot of people, they like those cash value accounts because they're, they're creating a bucket of money. Now, that bucket of money is coming from that overpayment that we saw on the other screen. Remember, $20 versus $2? Mm -hmm. So where is that extra $18 a thousand going? It's going to that little pot called cash value. So all your, they have to put it somewhere. And that money is accumulating over the years. So in a whole life policy, which goes for your whole life, you're accumulating all that cash. And a term goes to a certain number of years, maybe 30 years. So what is happening to that cash that's sitting there? That's the bigger question. So would you want your money in a cash value policy? And we're talking about a whole life policy right now with these rules. The life insurance company, number one, they charge you interest to borrow your cash value. Now, Greta, you're a professor. I want you to think about this for a minute. If you were depositing money in an account and it's your money, what would you think if they told you, I want to draw money out and they're, we're going to charge you interest if you draw your own money out? What would you say to that? Thumbs down. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, from an investment standpoint, from a use of your dollars you may you may come to the conclusion that that may not be a good place to put your money if you're going to be charged interest to touch your money right but still you know i would tell you some people like this because they look at this long term that well what if we need a new roof on the house and what if we need this at least i've got money set aside and i can go touch it but what they're not thinking is but there's kind of a little penalty if you touch it. We're going to charge you interest on money that right. you've deposited. And not only that, from an investment standpoint, that money should be earning significant interest, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, we want to more than 1% or 2%. We want it to really grow. So we, we got some question marks by that cash value. Now, number two, these are the rules of the life insurance company, not my rules. They keep your cash value if you die. So Greta, if you're depositing money in an account every month over the next 30 years, and maybe you've got $30,000 sitting in there at age 60, do you want that money for yourself and for your family, or would you like for the insurance company to keep it? <laughs> That's, is that a trick question? <laughs> no, I mean, do you want to give that to the insurance company? Um, no. Because you love them? <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather my family benefits. You'd rather your family get it, <laughs> yeah. right? So here's a quick, here's an illustration. You put $100 in, let's say, Bank of America, and, you know, you've been accumulating $5 here and $5 there, and maybe now you got $100 in there and you die. Do you want your beneficiaries to get your bank account money of $100, or do you want Bank of America to keep it? Yeah, I'd like yeah. them to get, yeah. Yeah, you, you don't want the bank <laughs> to keep your money. Yeah, your family. So, I mean... 
I don't know if, if, if people are aware of this or not, but so that cash value, but what the insurance company does, because by law, they're, they're ethical, you know, wholesale, pol a whole, a whole life policies, they will pay the face value. So remember on the other screen, we showed all of them going to pay that dollar, that face value. So if your policy is 100000 or 200 even if it's a million dollars, your whole life insurance company is going to pay that face value which is a million dollars or a hundred thousand dollars, they just will not pay the okay. cash value that's accumulated. And it could be, like we said, significant. So now let's go down to the third thing that happens with that little pot of money. They cancel your death benefit if you would draw all your cash value. So you find out that, I don't know why that's jumping, you find out that they're going to keep my cash. So I'm going to just, I want all my cash now. And you can do that. You can go in and you can make a request that I want all my cash value. So that's okay, Greta, then we've got to cancel your policy. And you go, good, I've got my money. Well, not so fast. By law, the insurance company has a right to charge you something called a cash surrender fee. You see that word up there, cash mm -hmm. surrender? Mm -hmm. By law, they can charge you a cash surrender fee, which can be up to 50% of that nice little nest egg that you have growing there. So there's a strong possibility if you had $30,000 sitting in that cash value policy, there's a very strong possibility you may only get $15,000 back of that $30,000. But we ask that you check with your insurance company on, on what percentage that they're going to render. What are those cash surrender fees? So, okay. Greta, again, knowing what you know, being in business, and, and you want your money to be safe, what would this cash value be a good option for you and your family? Uh, I don't, I don't, yeah, maybe. <laughs> not if, if they're going to keep um, your money. Not. If they're going to no. keep your money. Yeah, mm -hmm. I want my money. <laughs> right. So, if they're not going to give that money to you, if they're going to charge you interest and if they're only going to give you a portion of your money, um, then that may not be the best place for your money. A good, a good no. payout for your death benefit, but for that stash of cash, uh, uh, that cash yeah. is not, you know, maybe that, that $30,000 in that account should be 50000 because it should be earning okay. significant interest, right? So best use of your money remember so you want to protect your money so what we've okay. learned Greta is term life insurance costs less per thousand which affords you the savings to buy more death benefits and I can afford to, afford to buy a bigger term life policy because it doesn't cost 20 times the amount its whole life so now you can buy a policy that covers uh, remember we talked about critical and chronic illness I've sent you a video because I want you to look at it to explain okay. those living benefits, we talked about critical and chronic illness beyond death that you can utilize to protect your family. Would you share that on the screen, please? My name is Latasha McCray, and this is my living benefit story. I'm 38 years old. I'm a single mother of an 18 year old, and I work in the banking industry. I'm David Sutherland from Jacksonville, Florida, and I'm a living benefit life insurance agent. When I had first met Latasha, 30 years old, single mother with an eight-year-old son. I am an avid gym goer. I was really in great health. Dave came over one afternoon. She explained that, you know, what she was trying to accomplish was to protect her eight-year-old son in case something happened. The idea that I liked the most about the living benefits, um, it gave me security to let me know that if anything happened to me, my son would still be taken care of. What we ended up doing was a 30-year term policy for 250000 with all the benefits included. So I decided to put the policy in place with Dave. Years had gone by and I'm just working every day going to work, not thinking anything of it. And one day I get a phone call from my doctor and they called to let me know that I was diagnosed with stage two, three breast cancer. It was one of the worst calls in my life. Um, I literally thought I was like losing everything that I had always worked for. I had always been in great health. I had all, all these financial plans set and just to hear that, it just made me feel like I was losing everything. I went into shock for about two days. I didn't eat, I couldn't really sleep. My doctors were basically some of the best doctors that we had and they put a plan together how we were gonna beat cancer. So it began with telling me the financial needs, of course, the surgeries that I would need. The funding itself was astronomical. My job was kind enough 
to say, well, well, we'll give you time off, but it will be unpaid. Therefore, I really didn't have any income coming in to take care of my mortgage, to take care of my son. My insurance didn't cover 100% of my chemotherapy and I couldn't afford it. I had stocks, I had savings, but it was nothing compared to the money that I would need to take care of the chemotherapy. She happened to call and say, I need to cancel my plan. I have a health crisis and I've been diagnosed with breast cancer. And I said, well, no, you don't need to cancel your plan to try and save premium. You need to put in a claim. Through my job, I had great health insurance. I always thought that because I had great health insurance, I was always covered. Chemotherapy wasn't covered 100% with my insurance. So the living benefit really came in and helped me take care of those chemo treatments, my radiation, my surgeries, my biopsies. There's a lot of things associated with cancer that the insurance companies do not cover. That's what gets people in trouble financially. And that's why you have a plan with living benefits that you don't have to die to use your plan. I, did, I really didn't have income coming in to put gas in my car, to pay my car note. And I remember um, speaking with my doctors and they told me this financial plan was going to cost thousands. One of the first plans that I received was $20,000. The claims process uh, took two to two to three weeks at the at the most. And then Latasha called me one day and just uh, said, hey, uh, I just got a check in the mail today for just a little over $65,000. She still has almost $170,000 of a remaining benefit that's still existing. Even though I was still fighting cancer, I still had surgeries, I still had to recover from, financially I didn't have to fight through anything because the living benefits plan was there. I just wanted to make sure that my son didn't feel that his mom was sick. He knew I was sick. You know, it was something that I was living through. I didn't want it to affect him at all. Whether it's 30, 40, 50 dollars a month, this is your future that you're thinking about. A lot of people say, I love my kids. If you love your kids, think about your kids' future. Think about your future with your kids and think about your kids' future without you. If you're not thinking about all of these things, then you're you're really not planning for a future at all. And the living benefits plan basically makes sure that your kids are taken care of, you're taken care of, your illness is taken care of. Money isn't everything, but when you're battling cancer, it's a whole lot off of you. That was a pretty wow. powerful video. Whew. Very, Whew. yeah. I, you know, I talked to a lady today that had triplets and she just about oh. got sick to her stomach. They're, uh, I think they're five. And Ow. just the thought that if something happened to her, who's going to take care of those children? And um, they only have the life insurance the husband has at work. It's definitely not enough. Mm -hmm. They got another 10 years to take care of those kids. If she got one illness, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, anything, what's going to happen? Where's the income going to come from? And people don't realize that. And I think the most powerful thing, Greta, that we all learn from that is health insurance does not cover everything. Mm -mm. No, so, it doesn't. When you have those critical diseases and illnesses, their health insurance is, is about at 50%, maybe 70% of those yeah. procedures. And some of them aren't covered at all. Yeah, It sounded and, like she was pretty lucky to have some covered, but most of us are not so lucky, especially yeah, with cancer. She, <laughs> she, had, she said some of it. But now I, I want everybody to understand something, Greta. She had nine surgeries. So yep. remember we talked about 10 years worth of income. And then she said at the end, it's been two years, she's cancer free. That's about 10 years worth of treatment. Yeah, it is. Yep. You see how that can drag out. So when people say, well, why, why 10 years? Because when you're fighting for your life, 10 years is not a long time. And listen, you want those 10 years. Yep. You want yep. them. Um, so there's your education on living benefits, Greta. So when we talk about you protecting your family, you wanted that layer, you were concerned, you see this COVID going on. Given that extra layer of protection, now you only had a $10,000 policy at work. Are you adequately covered, Greta? No, not currently. No, you're not currently. And now you've got a bigger wake-up call that your health care may not cover everything should you get sick. Nope. So you learned a couple of things. Remember I said I'm a financial educator? <laughs> And uh, I specialize, I never said anything about selling your policy. Now, we know the policy can be the end result once you realize that you need something. So normally at this end, I ask everybody, well, what did you learn? So just tell me one or two things that you learned, Greta. Uh, what I learned is that not only am I not going to be covered, I'm not 
I don't get enough insurance from my office. I also know now the living benefit. I wasn't aware of the living benefit. And that's just the video and the stuff you've gone over made it real clear that I'm not covered and I really need to do something about it to protect my oh. family. And that's, you know, that's what I learned. And that's why I got like, I got passionate. I'm like, <laughs> I got to tell everybody about this. <laughs> Before I even bought a policy for myself, because I had to buy one for myself, I said, I got to tell everybody, this is powerful. Who They should be teaching this in school, but they're not. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm part of the small army that's educating people. It's my crusade and my passion to educate people on this. And, and I get compensated to teach. I mean, you're a teacher. Do they pay you to teach? Yep, they sure yep. do. Yep. I mean, teachers get paid. So that's not the forefront. You have a passion for teaching. You're an educator, and that's why you do it. I have a passion for teaching. So what I say to anybody out there, and I, and I tell Greta, so Greta, now, if you want to know what it would cost to cover your family, now that you know you're not, I just need three pieces of information from you. And that's okay. going to be your date of birth, okay. your height, and your okay. weight. Okay. Also, if you're a smoker or non-smoker, because nicotine, if, you, if, if there's nicotine involved, then that's adult. Just let me know. You know, okay. we cover nicotine, but I'll let okay. you know. Okay. So once you give me that information, Greta, then I will get you back some numbers. And here, I don't get you back one number. I give you the rainbow of numbers, everything mm -hmm. from a thousand to a million dollar policy, because I'm not going to pick anything for you. Okay. I'm not going to tell you, Greta, here's the best policy for you, because I picked it. No, you're always in the driver's seat with me. I want you to know what I know. Okay. That's true empowerment, true education. So I'm here to tell you, uh, and by the way, if you guys want to know, send that information to me. I'll be more than happy to, A, do this dime theory with you. B, I'll be more than happy to send you some, uh, some numbers, like I said, the rainbow, so you can see what that would look like. I'm happy to tell you that I did that with Greta. She gave me that information, and Greta got a policy, didn't you, Greta? <laughs> I sure did. How did you feel? How did you feel when you got that policy? Greta? I think I said this on the last time we were talking, but it's actually by my bed. <laughs> it's like it's. Like, I got the real policy printed out, and it actually sits near my bed. And now I sleep so much better. You don't even know, and that's oh. not even an exaggeration. That's the truth. I do know because I lost my job of forty-one years back in April. And out that window went my life insurance and my health insurance. And I tell you, I was nervous as anything because I knew if anything, if I had been sneezed, was in a car accident, lost my life, yep. my, my household is no longer protected. Right. So right. once I got my own policy, I'm telling you, it was a calm came over me. You wouldn't believe. Yep. There's just and something about like it. It just feels, a, you just feel yes. like now, now we got to look towards the future. It's just the COVID has shown us that we might not have a future so we've got to we got to still be hopeful and we still have to plan for that we still have to plan for it have faith yes and, and what did that lady say she says if you if you haven't done this and you're really not planning for a future then you're not yeah. planning to you're live. not planning for a future no you're not planning no, for a future you're your up. kids yep. or your kids future yep. Yep. so if you are not protected don't put your life in the hands of gofundme right. i've seen right. more gofundme accounts out there that literally people lost their income because husband or wife is so ill they they're, they're disabled now they can't work because of a critical illness they're 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 going to go go fund me um or or there's loss of life they're going to go fund me do you want to put your future and your life in the hands of go fund me no no and go fund me is not going to pay your mortgage mm -mm. and go fund me will never collect 10 years worth of income for you right never right so it's it's it may, you may get three months out of that and the cost of a funeral, but it's yep. not going to pay your income. So, Greta, this has been phenomenal. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Sabrina. Thank, Thank you, you, Professor Thank Greta you. Kishbaugh. Well, how, how can people get a hold of you? Where can yes. they yes. set Good up an question. appointment? Thank you, Greta. So, you can find me under my name. I'm an independent. I'm not a captive agent. I, I do not work for a life insurance company. Um you know, on their payroll, I am an independent because I wanted it that way. I want to be able to educate and teach on my terms, <laughs> you know, not on anybody else's and, and not have to meet quotas and, and, and basically sell. I wanted to educate. So this is a good fit for me. So you can find me under my name, Sabrina Protic. That's S-A-B-R-I-N-A, SabrinaProtic.com. That's my website, SabrinaProtic.com. 
Also, my email address is also my name, Sabrina at SabrinaProtic.com. Sabrina at SabrinaProtic.com. And also my phone number, 813-760-3307. That's 813-760-3307. I'll be happy to answer those questions. And I also want to let everybody know, too, if you need help with 401k rollovers, I am licensed to do that. I can roll over IRAs or Roths, or I can also set up annuities. And I never knew what an annuity was. And um, (laughs) now I know that it's income. It provides a vehicle of income for you when you retire. Mm -hmm. But it's what pensions used to do, but you're doing it for yourself. So I can help you set up annuities. I can help you roll over. And if you're a 1099, I can um, help you set up a 401k or an IRA or for yourself. I can do that. Or if you have employees, I can set up a small plan for you. So Sabrina's in the house. (laughs) She can help you protect your finances, whether it's for life insurance, whether it's loss of life, protecting with critical or chronic illness, helping you eliminate debt. That's free. We have a free program to help you do that. And then to save money for retirement. So there are two things you want to accomplish. You want to start setting up growth income right now. So if you're 20s and 30s, you want to put money somewhere where it grows. That's called growth and, you know, growth money. So it should be, you know, earning that interest and growing. And then you want to set up retirement income. So that's how much money you want to get every month. Because everybody knows Social Security is not enough. I tell people, if, you, if you're making, if you have earned $2,500 right now in Social Security, could you live off of $2,500 right now? Nobody can. Well, if you can't do it now, how are you going to do it later when inflation, are you gonna do it? Yeah, that's right. inflation kicks in? Or if you have a 401k right now, I got $100,000 in my 401k. Do you know that's about $400 a month worth of income? That's nothing. It's nothing. So yeah. if you think you're doing good, you've got a hundred grand in your 401k, you're looking at about $400 a month to fund your retirement. That's not enough. So what are you going to live off of when you retire? That's a huge question. And how are you going to get there? Well, that's something that I do. Well, so thank I'm goodness Sabrina. we have you, Sabrina. <laughs> and I'm just here to help. I'm here to help. You're so a big you lost help. your job and you got to do something because you have 60 days to roll that money over, call me. Okay. And then also I can help set those things up. Greta, I want to thank Deidre Pittman thank thank for having thank us you. on. Mama D, Deidre Pittman, she is my ace uh, girl. I, I love her. I've referred a lot of business to her, and I trust her. If you don't have a tax professional, you need to have one. Right. My name is Deidre Pittman. She is, she's, she's the real deal. So thank you, Deidre. Thank you, fierce females and finances. Love this group. Thank you, Greta. Thank you, Sabrina. Reach out to me. We'll talk later.